What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to easily build a machine learning application with a graphical user interface using Gradio. And we're going to do that by using a handwritten digit recognition as an example here. So let us get right into it. All right, so as a motivational preview up front, this is what we're going to end up with. We're going to have a canvas on the left side and we're going to have the model predictions, the model output on the right side. And we can use this canvas to now draw something, for example, the digit three, and then we're going to get some output here, the prediction here at the top, and then the likelihood of all the other digits. In this case, it's obviously a three. If I do something like this, it will still say it's a three, but it's not as certain anymore. If I just draw some some nonsense like this, you can see it says it's, it's a seven, but maybe a two, um, I can try to draw a five again. And you can see it recognized this is a five, maybe I can go with an eight. There you go. So you can see this is what we're going to end up with. And the main focus is on Gradio building that user interface. So this is going to be happening in two parts here, we're going to train a model uh, to do the handwritten digit recognition, and then we're going to build a Gradio application very easily that allows us to do this to use this in the browser. All right, so we're going to start by installing two packages that we're going to need for this video today. For that, we're going to open up the command line, the terminal, and we're going to type pip or pip three install. And then we're going to need Gradio, which is what we're going to use for the actual application for the user interface. So pip install Gradio, and we're going to need some machine learning framework, you can go with TensorFlow, PyTorch, scikit-learn, if you want to do traditional machine learning, it doesn't really matter because how you get to the predictions is irrelevant for the Gradio application, the Gradio application is going to give you an image. And with that image, you want to do some prediction, and you want to return a result. So you want to return um, for the individual classes, how likely it is that they are the correct class. So we're going to use in this video today, TensorFlow, but you can go also, as I said, with scikit-learn, if you want to do some uh, support vector machine, or some random forest classifier, whatever you want to go with, but we're going to go with TensorFlow here. So we're going to install Gradio and TensorFlow. And once these two packages are installed, we're going to start by creating a file called training.py. As I already mentioned, we're going to split this into two parts here, we're going to train the model first, that is going to do the handwritten digit recognition. And in the second part, we're going to build the actual application around that model. So we're going to use the uh, model training code only once and then we're going to use the application which is going to load the model uh, from a file. That's the basic idea. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say import tensorflow as tf and then from tensorflow dot we're going to import layers and uh, models. So in my case here, PyCharm doesn't recognize the path for some reason, but it still works, you can check if it works on your side by just running. And if you don't get a, a, an error message, this is just a warning, if you don't get an error message, it works. So what we're going to do now is we're going to load the MNIST data set. So the digits data set, the handwritten digits uh, data set from uh, Keras itself. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say train images, and train labels. <clears throat> then we're going to have test images, test labels. And this is going to be loaded from tensorflow dot keras dot data sets, and then dot mnist, and then load underscore data. So this is just going to load the data set automatically from keras, we don't need to import some uh, CSV file, we can just use keras data sets directly here. Uh, and we're going to have already a trained test split. So we're going to have, uh, I think, 60,000 images here in the training set, and I think 10,000 images uh, in the testing set. And we can now just basically go ahead and um, normalize the images. So we're going to divide by 255, because we have the RGB values, we divide by 255 to get values between zero and one, instead of between zero and 255. Um, and how we do that is we say train images is equal to train images, we're going to reshape here, uh, 60,000 instances, 28 pixels, 28 pixels, one channel. Um, and we want to have all of this as type float, so that we can actually do the uh, float 32 bit we want to do um, a division. And because of that, we want to have a float so divided by 255. 
And then we can do the same thing for the test images here. Test images. And then what we can do here is we can take the labels and we can turn them into categorical um, into categorical variables. So instead of having just a label, instead of just having one, two, three, four, we're going to have for the individual labels, uh, a categorical representation. So I can print it here so that you can see what the difference is, train labels, and then we're going to say train labels is going to be, come on, train labels is going to be equal to TensorFlow, Keras, Utils, two underscore categorical train labels, and then you're going to see if I print it again, it's going to look different. Uh, what's the problem here? Cannot reshape. Ah, because here we only have 10,000. Uh, but yeah, here you can see what we have, we have just um, for every instance for every image, we have a digit five, zero, four, whatever. And now we have here a one hot encoded representation. So basically, it's a zero for all the uh, digits that are not the correct digit. And then it's a one for the digit that's the correct digit. So we just have a different representation, which is more useful uh, for the model that we want to build here. So we can take this and we can copy it, we can change this to test labels is equal to two categorical test labels. Um, and then basically what we need to do is we just need to build a neural network architecture that is going to be trained on this data to make the prediction. So we're going to say model is equal to models dot sequential. And then we're going to just um, define a simple architecture of uh, starting with a convolutional layer. So we're going to say layers.conf2d. We're going to have 32 here, kernel size of three by three. And then we're going to have as an activation function here, ReLU, rectified linear unit. The input shape is of course going to be equal to 28281. Um, and then we're going to add some max pooling layers here. So we're going to have convolutional layer, max pooling, convolutional, max pooling, convolutional, then we're going to flatten it, then we're going to have some dense layers. Uh, you can also change this if you want to, you can keep it simpler, if you wanted to train faster. In my case, I'm just going to go now with a max pooling to D layer. Um, and then we're going to basically uh, we can copy this, we can paste this, we can change this here to 64. And of course, we don't want to have the input shape anymore. Uh, we're going to keep that layer here. And what we're going to do then is we're going to have one more of these. And then afterwards, we're going to have um, a flatten layer. So layers dot flatten. And then we're going to just add for the complexity, a dense layer with 64 neurons, activation is going to be ReLU. And then finally, we're going to have our output layer. So we're going to say model add layers dense with 10 output neurons, because we have 10 digits and we want to have the probability for each individual uh, digit, all adding up to one. And because of that, the activation function is obviously going to be softmax, because softmax does exactly that it takes the output and uh, make sure that it is um, one when you add up all the neurons, uh, which basically gives us the probabilities. Uh, and now all we need to do is we need to say model compile, we're going to use as an optimizer here, the atom optimizer, as a loss function, we're going to use the categorical cross entropy. And the metric that we want to keep track of while training is going to be the accuracy met metric. Uh, and then we're going to say model fit train images, train labels, we're going to do this for five epochs. We're going to do this with a batch size of 64. And then we're going to have validation split of 0 
And of course, what you could do now here as well is you could evaluate the model with a test set. We're not going to do this. We're just going to keep it uh, simple now because the focus is on the application. But what we want to do in the end is we want to save the model. So we want to save it as model.h5, for example. And then we can just run this and wait for it to finish training. It will take some time. Uh, but first of all, we have a problem. Metric is plural metrics. Now it should work. There you go. It's training. We can skip this part and jump uh, directly into the application. Okay, so the training is done. It tells me here that the format h5 is considered legacy. So probably you should go with dot keras instead. Uh, I'm going to keep it like this now doesn't really matter for this uh, particular video here. Now we have the model we have it as a file and all we need to do is we need to build an application around it because this model now is capable of recognizing handwritten digits. So we can take an image we can pre process it we can feed it into the model and we can get a most likely correct output. The problem is that you cannot ship this to a user, you cannot give them the application or you cannot give them an application, because you just have the model and the model doesn't do much, you need something that uses the model. And this is where Gradio comes into play. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, let's say app.py here or main py, whatever you want to call it. Here now we're going to import Gradio as gr. And we're going to import tensorflow as tf. The first thing we want to do is we want to load the model. So the model is going to be loaded by TF Keras models load model model dot h5. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say um, a function here is going to be called recognize digit, and the input is going to be an image. And what we want to do in this function is we want to say, okay, if the image that we get here is not none. Um, if that is the case, so if the image is not none, what we're going to do is we're going to say the image is going to be reshaped in the same way that our training data was reshaped. So we're going to say here, uh, one image 28 pixels times 28 pixels, and one channel as type float 32 divided by 255. This is exactly what we did when training the model, which is why we do it here when applying the model as well. And then what we do is we say prediction is whatever the model predicts this image to be. So model predict image like this. Uh, and this prediction now we can take it and we can transform it into a dictionary of probability. So we can return as a result of this function here, uh, string of I, which is uh, the key and the value is going to be a float of prediction zero i for i in range and then 10 because we have 10 possible digits. Otherwise, we're just going to return an empty string. So this now here's our function. Again, if you are using PyTorch, if you're using scikit-learn, it doesn't matter, you can just change this function. The important thing is the function needs to take an image as an input and it needs to return some string, because the string is going to be then displayed uh, in a label. And with this simple function, now, all we have to do is we have to define a very, very simple Gradio user interface to use this in an actual application. So we're going to say here, I face for interface is going to be a gr interface. And this interface will have the function being equal to recognize digits, the inputs are going to be a gr image, the shape of this image, those are all parameters from Gradio. So they are predefined. The shape of the image is 28 times 28. The image mode is L. And then we're going to say invert colors equals true. And the important thing now here is the source and I think my camera is blocking this now. Uh, the source has to be canvas because when you say source equals canvas, it basically provides you with a canvas that you can draw on, which is exactly what we want to do. Otherwise, you would have to upload images. Um, all right, and then what we need is we need an output label. So gr label, and we're going to say here number top classes equals and we can decide here now how many classes to display only the top three guesses all the guesses. So if I say three, for example, 
we're going to only see the best three predictions for the given drawing. And of course, we need to also set here life equals true. Um, and to run this, we can say I face launch. And if I didn't make any mistakes, this should now launch and be hosted in localhost here. And if I run this now, you can see that this is what we end up with. I can draw on this canvas and I can see here the results of the predictions. I can draw some nonsense, then it's less clear. Um, yeah, I can do it like this. Maybe I can draw a small points down here. You can see I get the top three guesses. Now what I can also do is I can go ahead and say, give me all 10 then I would get more information, but I would also get a more verbose output, uh, which is the same thing, but you get more information, but it's also oh, it's also maybe too much information. So you can see it's very confused if I just add a pixel down here, it doesn't really know what to think about this. Uh, if I draw something like this, it will tell me it's a two, if I draw something like this, five, but if I change it, maybe like this, oh, it's still a five. Uh, yeah, this is a six. And we can also play around and see, okay, at what point does a three, for example, uh, become a an eight, you know, maybe if I do this. Now it's an eight. So at what point does this happen, you can play around with this a little bit. Uh, okay, now this is very fast. But if I add just a little bit here, you can see how the probabilities change immediately. So just very minor changes here, uh, change a lot already. Uh, yeah, and you can do that with different components with different UI elements. This is a simple example of just having a model that recognizes handwritten digits and immediately turning it into an application that someone can use. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and 